Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today, we're going to be having ourselves a 2v2. On Ler New. Or Le Noix, or like, I don't know what the hell you pronounce it. But our heroes today are going to be Mr. Prale, or Prale, I don't know how you pronounce it. Playing as a Soviet in the yellow. And his ally in the blue is going to be Mr. Nixa. Again, as another Soviet, but this time in the blue. Their opponent in the red as the lead is going to be Lucifer himself, playing as the Ostir faction or Wehrmacht faction in the red. And again, for the Ostir or Wehrmacht, is going to be Mr. Dutch Lancer as the pink or purple trunks Germans or Ostir. So we haven't really seen this map too much. It uh, it's kind of you know not too um, favorable for me to cast two v twos anymore. As ever the change on the uh, overlay, I don't kind of like the way it looks, and I don't guarantee it. But well, here you have the map. It's essentially you know three victory points, uh, two up in the north, one in the center or southern center, with you know your. Uh, your munitions down south, fuel up in the north, and a fuel in the center. Everything else is some strategic points. So we hear some engagements in the center. We have Grenadiers and Conscripts duking it out. Conscripts going to be rushing into the house, going to be getting that advantage against the Grens, and the Grens are going to be forced to back off. There aren't a lot of windows to shoot in this direction, and the Grens backpedal themselves into some heavy cover. That, in fact, however, does allow a second uh, rifle to shoot from that house rather than just one from the window over here. But with a second Grenadier squad coming up to support, the conscript inside that house is going to lose the engagement if it does not get any additional support. Down south, we hear another engagement going as Pios and combat engineers are engaging at close range. Pios will win the engagement at close range, but with a conscript squad coming up behind them for the flank, the Pios will lose the engagement and are forced to retreat. So Lucifer, not wanting to lose any of his denizens of hell, is going to be retreating to fight another day. Up in the far north, we see Grenz just capturing around, Pios as well. No engagement so far, as we see that Mr. Nixa has sent his uh, conscripts more towards the center rather than anywhere else. We have more conscript squads all over, and basically a little bit of a combined effort here for both players to break the center and control it for themselves. But in, s in doing so, they are sacrificing the north as it did get capped, but then the squads got sent into the center. It is turning out to be rather effective as we see the Grenadiers from the center retreating. Both squads for both players getting the hell out of there. We see a third squad coming up as a Gren, but it isn't, you know, uh, an ideal scenario for it as it is fighting against four Conscript squad at the same time. MG42 is brought into the scene for Lucifer, Conscript's Ura after it, so they're going to force it to retreat as it's not going to be able to pack up. However, it does get itself in range of its space sector MGs that are currently covering the approach. The Conscripts are forced to retreat, a little bit too zealous, too bold, and they pay the price. They didn't lose anything, but they are now effectively out of the fight. Probably would have been better to just simply push forward and then pull back. Would have won him that engagement against Mr. Lancer. MG42 opening up in the house. We got conscripts behind on the well. More conscripts around capping. Down south, we got conscripts and combat engineers capturing that strategic point. And we see Grenz putting themselves into some light cover there by those falling trees. Conscript squad coming up for a flank. A Molotov is going to get tossed. Lands straight on that Grand Squad. Grand Squad decides to take the heat a little bit. Loses one of its members instantly and then retreats. MG42 repositions itself to cover the entire approach. Going to be opening up on the Conscripts. And the Conscripts retreat before getting shot at. A little bit too cowardly, I would say, for the uh, Motherland. But, well, they will be fighting more during the fight. Doctrine has been selected for Mr. Prail. He goes for the Soviet Reserve Army, as we can see Irregulars now on the field. Remember, Irregulars do come with uh, stolen <laughs> or salvaged equipment in the form of either uh, LMGs from the Grens or DP Light Machine Guns. This squad specifically came up with DP, I mean, uh, with LMGs from the Grens. Second squad also coming in with that. Uh, what do we have for the Germans? We have both players just going for Grenz and MG. Nothing additional so far. Do we have any additional tech? We have a med bunker going to be going down. And we see the uh, Escalate to Battle Phase 1 being produced for Mr. Lucifer himself. Pyo's getting flamethrowers. 
Grants moving forward, and slowly but steadily the German forces are creeping back into the center, and with the north completely in their control, they're actually in quite a favorable position. Down south, munitions are also getting uh, re recaptured, as well as strategic points to connect them, so... As good as an, an effort was for the uh, Soviet forces to uh, to push uh, together into the center and uh, dislodge the Germans, it didn't last them too long. They, uh, they ended up losing the territory. And it may have been for uh, premature uh, retreats, so we'll see. Anyways, Molotovs get tossed into this house down south. The Garands pop in. They notice they're burning, so they decide to pop out and run away. Pyos move up with their flamethrowers. They're going to be able to get a decent amount of damage there on that conscript squad as it's clumped up. But since they are getting shot at by three conscript squads at the same time, all of them at six strength, that is 18 guns in their direction, they decide to retreat because they don't want to die. MG42 being a little bit distracted there as it is shooting at the uh, conscripts inside the house manages to allow a conscript squad to close the distance. Motov does get tossed right on top of the Grenz. Grenz burning down to one man. Forced to retreat, the MG42 also forced to pack up as a splash AoE of the fire will force him off. Half track on the field for Lucifer, that is the mortar half track as he has selected his own doctrine, that is the spearhead doctrine, as well as Dutch Lancer selected Jaeger infantry doctrine. With the mortar half track on the field, they now have vehicle superiority, even though it's not really an attack vehicle, and the mortar will help against all those clumped up infantry. Up in the north, LMGs on the irregulars trying as much as they can. To do as much as they can against these Grens, but they are irregulars. They are not trained in the ways of war, and they uh, eh, they're not as good. Jeez, Prail hitting hard on them partisans. He already has four of them on the field. Ends up losing his combat engineers, but it looks like not sure where that happened. Uh, but yeah, I mean four regulars. They are pretty cheap. I mean 190. Manpower, so it does allow you to have quite a bit of them. Pyo's up in the north with a flamethrower, engaging the regulars. The regulars just bursting a flame as they uh, as they go down, down to two men, very low in health. A very risky move there by Prail and leaving that partisan squad there. Does end up retreating after the engagement to uh, reinforce and potentially heal up. Do we have meds? Yeah, we do have medics out on the field for both of the Soviet players, so their troops will be nice and healthy by the time they hit the field. Nixa selecting his own doctrine. That is the tank hunter tactics. Haven't seen a lot of this doctrine. We did see it, I believe, once in the tournament. Didn't get to see it too much. This, uh... Yeah, I mean, I actually haven't seen the uh, uh, grenade assault too much. But, well, well, we'll see if we can spot it. Pioneer squad moving down to the south, going to try to recapture some territory as the munitions have been captured by the conscripts. Conscripts down to three men, retreating back to base. Full full health squad moving up to replace them. Conscripts inside this house are still at six men strong, but they have taken quite a beating to the MU fire. Up in the north, we see a big engagement. Three grenadier squads against irregulars and conscripts. Conscripts with PPS Sages are pushing forward. The uh, grenade does go off, or Molotov looks like. Goes off on the Grenz, down to two men on each squad, and they are forced to retreat. Since Prail did go for the Soviet Reserve Army, it gives him the Conscripts Assault Package, as you can see there, as the second, uh, you know, second thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that gives uh, Conscripts a decent amount of firepower at close range. It is, I do not believe what it once was in its glorious days, but it is a decent amount of improved firepower, allowing your conscripts to pull into the later game a little bit easier. Also, a nice thing is that for Nixa, his conscripts can upgrade with PTRSs, so that'll help him against those vehicles and should actually help against this thing, but so far, Lucifer along uh, being, you know, Quite conservative with his mortar half track has only scored one kill so far and very little amounts of um, veterancy, but you know, it's still there, so go be a nuisance. Hmm. Back at base we see Lucifer has gone for tier two and is getting himself a Panzer Grenadier squad. Over here we see something probably got blown up. I mean cancelled to be precise. But Tier 2 has gone down for Deutschlandser, but he has not built anything from it just yet. Nice.
Nice attempt there by Lucifer to catch the uh, conscript on the retreat. It was down to one man. Almost catches a kill on the squad, but unfortunately, it was not a precise shot, and it uh, it whiffed. Down south, Panzer Grenadiers for Lucifer are just capturing territory by themselves. They don't need no Grenadiers to help them. They are strong, independent Panzer Grenadiers. The regulars trying to fight against Grenz inside this house. Not really having too much luck. They're also out in the open, not even in light cover. Now they get into light cover, but still, I mean, it's gotta be a hard to dislodge. Conscripts pushing straight through the center of the road. Grenadier squad trying to stop them, but, well, they won't. <laughs> not a two on one, and we see irregulars and conscripts coming up for a flank on the German infantry. However, they do run themselves into a Panzer Grenadier squad. Panzer Grenadier squad having its way with the irregulars. Forces them to retreat. Conscripts also suffering a similar fate down to three men, forcing the retreat as well. We do see, however, a something. <laughs> what was it? Uh, no? I mean, these guys were out forward and got some shots. It looked like it had gotten uh, hit by something else before. But, well, I mean, we do have... No? These are the two guys. So I'm guessing maybe just small arms fire? Added small arms fire since it was two squads uh, ended up killing it, uh, or maybe it killed itself. I don't know. But we'll see. Another uh, mortar half track is on the field, however, for Mister uh, Lucifer. Wait, was it a friendly fire? No, no, it wasn't. Okay, well, I'll see if I can get a quick uh, picture picture for that, and uh, at least it'll be clear for you. <laughs> if not, well, then I forgot. So our map, more conscripts moving around up in the north. We see conscripts with PTRS rifles running into Grenz with G43s. Or is it called G43s? Yeah, G43s. There you go. They do end up winning there. And we do have a half track up in the north. The uh, MG also has Cloak. Is it not? No. Ambush can upgrade ears, Pencil Grenade ears, or Heavy MGs can be upgraded with better camouflage, concealing them in cover or deep snow. Ooh, that's nice. I didn't know the MGs got that. That's a nice little ambush there. Um, I thought only Grenz and stuff. Combat infantry got that. Conscripts pushing forward, catching again the uh, mortar half-track a little bit out of position. These conscripts don't have the PTRS rifles equipped, so they aren't unable to get any uh, damage on it, and they were not able to get in range for a thing. And these conscripts decide that, you know what would be nice? If the mortar half-track could just push a little bit forward and hit us, especially with an incendiary round, it looks like. And there you can see the shot. And boom, and one goes to blaze right away. Damage starts stacking. And uh, Nixa deciding that he's gonna tough it out and stick to the flames. Two more conscripts, a third conscript catches flame. Down to four on each of them. And more casualties being applied. Conscript squad down to one man up in the front gets eliminated by Panzer Grenadiers on the chase. And the conscripts in the center, four and three. Losing a lot, just sitting there capping. Not exactly necessary. They could have even moved to the edge over here and not suffered as much damage, but I guess he was otherwise uh, engaged. Irregulars getting their ass beaten in by Panzer Grenadiers. Down to two men. Barely make it out of there as another irregular squad is trying to uh, hold the line. Also get themselves spanked, and the Panzer Grenadiers just push forward and are going to get some additional shots on the, the retreat on those irregulars. Could even get a kill. Can they? No, they don't. Down south, conscripts Ura forward as they dodge a rifle grenade by the uh, Grenz. Get themselves right on top of the Grenz with their P uh, Pipishkas, the uh, PPSHs. Getting a lot of damage there at close range. The Grenz are forced to retreat as even though they inflict a decent amount of damage, those SMGs are deadly at close range. Up in the north, conscript squad running into the camouflaged uh, MG. T-34 now on the field for Mr. Nixa, forces the retreat of the MG, forces the retreat of the Grenz, and with the blood splattered across its frontal hull, it puts the fear of God into these Lancer's infantry, and uh, he's actually chasing down that, uh, that MG. Not exactly a smart move, because he's not going to accomplish too much, it's already back at base, uh, and we see that a... Um, a stug is getting produced for Mr. Lancer, so that T-34 should get the hell out of there or it's going to get itself killed. Lucifer, for his part, is also building a pack gun, just to add an additional, and also Dutch Lancer is getting a pack gun as well, so... 
Uh, we see another T-34 getting produced for Nixa as he leaves his right in front of the base. A little bit too bold there. Now he realizes the mistake, and you know what? I'm just going to back off. It doesn't make sense to just be there. And we see that Tier 4 has gone down for Prail, and he has gotten a Katushka, or Katusha, sorry, not Katushka, a Katusha uh, out on the field. Not a very precise weapon, but decently popular in the sense that it, um, that it, uh, you know, it can do a lot of damage to clumped up uh, units, and well, in team games, it's kind of safe to say that you're going to see clumped up infantry. Grand here's in the center, deciding that they do not, in fact, want to Faust the uh, T-34. They decide to dance around it a little bit, get themselves down to one man, and then get shot by the T-34, eliminating the entire squad. Panzer Grenadiers push forward as they decide that they uh, do not need Trex to engage the T-34. And the Garens down south also not moving into range to try and get a Faust off going on the T-34. So, not exactly sure what they're trying to do, but with the pack gun coming up, if that T-34 had been snared, it would have been a great opportunity. Stug, gonna be uh, assaulted here by T-34. T-34 runs itself straight into the Grens. These Grens decide, you know what, we actually have Faust. We're gonna go ahead and Faust them. Down goes the snare. The T-34 is uh, about halfway damaged, but the Stug is on the chase. T-34 up in the north, not going to be risking going for the hunt of the Stug as it, you know, risks itself getting uh, eliminated. And the Stug also not risking itself, not going to be pushing forward, and this T-34 is allowed to remain with life. AT gun now on the field for Mr. Nixa, going to be covering this approach, not currently looking at the Stug. It is covered by the T-34, so that's not too bad. And in the center, we see, our, we see the ongoing engagement as conscripts try to go for the cap of the fuel in the center. Down south, we'll see an engagement as Panzer Grenadiers and conscripts are duking it out. The conscripts are able to inflict a decent amount of damage here to the Panzer Grens as they have their SMGs and their veterancy. But however, oh, when Nasty Bundle Lane goes down, actually ends up doing a little bit of self-splash damage. And down to one man, the conscripts actually hold the line as the Panzer Grenadiers kind of messed up there with throwing a grenade too close and not moving. Center map, conscripts and irregulars just continue to push forward with their upgraded weaponry. Second Katusha now on the field for Mr. Prail. Has he actually done anything with the one? Well, it looks like one has scored five kills with its barrage. Second one moving up, barrage going to be going through. Here comes the rockets. And it looks like it's going to be aiming at the mortar half track. Yes, it does. Gets a nice direct hit there. The mortar half track takes some damage. Second shots landing nearby, but the mortar half track able to get out of there alive. A little bit of damage added there, so it will get a little bit of better soon, but not too much. T-34s going for a suicide run, it looks like. the uh, One of them took quite a beating down to 25% strength. The other one got stunned and then got snared. The Stug backing off into the distance. And with the pack on for support, that T-34 actually makes it out of there. We do have the AT gun there, so the Stug probably was worried about that as it took a lot of damage. Almost gets killed. But the T-34 down south does end up, uh, well not south, but, you know, T-34 over here <laughs> in the north, but south to the north. I don't know. Ends up dying because it was too close to the pack gun and such. MG-42 opening up with incendiary rounds. Get those conscripts down to two men each. The Katusha on the field for Prail. Moving up to Barrage. One Barrage goes off. Getting a lot of hits in there. Pack actually taking a nasty direct hit there. And the MG42 repositioning itself to another fence. Grens, Grens, and Packs push down. And we see this T34 getting repaired. The other Katusha not in full, uh, not active just yet. Not sure what I'm trying to say there. And we see Rapid Conscription getting upgraded or, uh, you know, Selected for Prail. He has suffered a lot of damage on his infantry count. He's lost all his irregulars. But with this, even if he loses a lot of conscripts, although he doesn't want to lose the entire squad, retreat it. It's not how it works. Uh, yeah. Not sure if Prail, you know, knows exactly how it works. I'm pretty sure he does. But yeah, I mean, you don't. Yeah, hold on. We're just going to watch this. Look at that dance of death. And. Anyways, 
you don't actually need to lose the entire squad. It actually counts the entities that you're losing to replace. So, for example, this squad can re retreat without having to lose a Veteran C3 squad. And he does. So, I mean, it doesn't actually... It's not worth it to lose your squad just to get it replaced. You just want to lose entities and get more squads, essentially. So, the manpower that you lose in the engagement as you push forward and try to capture territory, you're going to get, you know, reimbursed for. Anyways, the third Katusha getting built for Prale. We now have a Tiger on the field for Lucifer. That's going to be very difficult for the Soviets to deal with. They don't actually have any, uh, well, anything on the field by Prale that can fight it. We do have two T-34s on the field for Nixa. They can kind of keep it at bay and an AT gun, but the AT gun has been cleared off. If he can recover it, that's great, but it is very close. The Tiger could actually just target it down and eliminate it. Doesn't actually need to retreat, Lucifer. You are the uh, god of the... Underworld, I mean, you you know, you should act like it and go kill that gun. Anyways, MG42 up in the north did get eliminated by the Katusha, it looked like. And we do have a Stug also nearby for support. But aside from that, I mean, yeah, he is anti-tank uh, tactics. Tactics, right? Yeah. Uh, tank hunter tactics, sorry. Uh, so he has the assault, you know, the barrage and such, but it isn't, you know... None of it is very hard anti-tank. You know, PTRS rifles are passive, kind of. <laughs> they add a little bit of damage that goes through the vehicles, but, you know, it's not too great. So, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Sorry about that. Grand Squad down south retreating as we have some conscripts for Prail trying to recover some territory. And in spite of the rapid conscription, he only has three conscripts on the field. So, yeah, I mean, Prale, if you are watching or listening, that is not how you do it. Retreat early. Don't lose your squats. And that's and the rapid conscription is just going to make sure that you get extra squats at the end of it. So, the manpower that you lost uh, and that you're going to have to spend reinforcing is reimbursed in the fact that you also got additional squats. So Prale getting himself an SU-85 to be able to help out in some way to the uh, to the anti-tank effort. AT gun taking quite a beating there for Mr. Nixa down to two men. Backs off T-34 is just taking damage to the front there by the Stug. Stug have very good damage against T-34 saying in range. Conscripts up north just getting themselves beaten down to one man. Gets eliminated, not even retreated. And Nixa is going to be building another AT gun to try to stave off this, but yeah, I mean, there's not a lot here that the Soviets can do. That SU-85 will go a long way to help out because of its range. If it can catch and kill the Stug, it would be great, but I don't see that happening. Not easily. And we see the Katushas, all three of them, <laughs> have been moved back to, uh, to the base. We have... No veterans he's just yet, two kills on one, one kill on the other, and ten kills on one of them, which has not uh, granted its uh, sufficient veterancy for even veterancy one. Which is kind of sad, but, yeah, well. Can't win them all. Center of the map is pretty much uh, vacated. We don't have any German forces around. Nixa uh, does have infantry, have, has the most infantry, really. Because uh, Prale only has two conscripts, <laughs> so he at least has combat engineers and an MG. Is it a stolen MG? No, that is a Maxim machine gun. I mean, those are currently covering up north, but his infantry can move into the center to capture some territory. Currently, we do have a triple cap going against the Allies, or all the Soviets, really. 250 versus 287. Uh, so the, uh, the Soviets are in the losing end. And we have Lucifer having four Panzer Grenadiers on the field, so that is a lot of anti infantry. So, yeah, I mean, he's just going to focus on that Tiger because he doesn't really need anything else. Dutch Lancer, for his part, is getting more Pios on the field. Looks like he wants to be able to provide some repairs. And he has Grenz with G43s to be able to provide a lot of damage uh, from range as the Panzer Grenadiers of, of Lucifer um, close the distance. So, not a bad composition you have there. Fuel and Southern uh, Victory Point has gotten decapped by Mr. Nixa. So he's going to try and uh, do that. But yeah, I mean, the Northern Point is easily held as we have two points. Oh, nice. Katusha's Barrage is going up into the north. Getting a lot of kills there on those Grens. That Gren squad. Oh, it almost goes down. One squad up in the north does end up getting lost. 
And the uh, the pack gun actually took a nasty hit. Tiger also taking some brunt damage there, but not too much. As we see, infantry for the uh, Soviets continues to capture the south as the Germans have abandoned the south. Unfortunately, though, it's not really working out for them because for them to focus on the north, they would at least have to have this point locked down and, uh, and captured so that even though they are not focusing in the south and, you know, losing those territories, they still have the double cap going and their points are still bleeding in their favor. But now we see that the Soviets have recovered some territory. They push forward. The Grands are trying to hold the line, but really can. We do have a half-track on the field for Dutch Lancer to reinforce. So, you know, there's no real reason not to push a little bit forward and control the second victory point. Even though, yes, it is scary and difficult to do so. Grants in the front getting pinned down by the Maxim Machine Gun. The Conscripts trying as much as they can to do as much as they can. Conscripts do have, uh, whatever it's called, the Rapid Conscription. Um... But most of them aren't even there. We have a combat engineer squad trying to sneak all the way through the edge of the map up to the north. And we have more conscripts pushing forward as he still has 45 seconds left on the ability. So for example, this veteran C3 squad, you don't want to lose it. You just want to push forward, get some damage going as much as you can in a safe manner. You know, not lose a squad and, uh, and retreat so that the rapid conscription can give you an additional squad. Stay looking at it, because I don't want... Yeah, there he goes. Oh, nice. Katusha Barrages hitting those piles. Piles will start forced to retreat. We do have better NC1 on one of the Katushas, as it has acquired 11 kills. 6 kills on the other, and 10 kills on the other. Very close to better NC1. It is when they hit better NC2 that it starts to get, uh, you know, more interesting with the Katushas, as, you know, they get increased accuracy. And rate of fire, apparently. Conscripts pushing forward. It looks like they're trying to get themselves in range for an AT grenade. But the Tiger is just backing off. They actually do get in range, although they stop once they flank the uh, MG, trying to get some damage in there. Molotov does fly, getting a little bit of cooking damage there. And we now see a Panzerwerfer on the field for Dutch Lancer. No additional Tiger on the field for Mr. Lucifer, and he doesn't have any pilots to repair. We do have two by Lancer that can help out, but, you know, you need something. Fragmentation Bomb getting called right on top of one of the... Oh, nice strafe right there. Clears out one of the AT guns. The Tiger sitting pretty there. AT gun behind it, getting some shots off, but not actually hitting the Tiger. Not sure what it was doing. And down south, we see a Panzer Grenadier squad getting caught by a T-34, but not <laughs> really. As a second Tiger now on the field for Lucifer actually catches the T-34 down south. T-34 runs away, returning fire and hitting the Tiger, but not actually doing too much because, well, it's a Tiger. Demo charge getting laid down down south for Nixa. A nice sneaky maneuver. Could actually hit the Tiger. The Tiger is moving in that direction. The uh, combat engineers are going to get spotted there by the Tiger. The Tiger is going to be opening up on them. Uh, but, uh, no, it doesn't actually move. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he was waiting on that. Combat engineers decide to just simply hoof it out of there. They don't, um, they don't retreat. And up in the north, the victory point has been recovered by the Soviets, and they are not letting go. As Katusha Barashes head up into the north, trying to hit a, uh, a pack gun. Two tigers, like combine here. There's not a lot going on there. So Prail, man, finally managing to uh, to get it right with the rapid conscription, has managed to get himself quite a bit of. Uh, of infantry power, he is now up to five conscript squads. He even has a stolen pack gun in his uh, possession and a combat engineer squad. So yeah, I mean, with the rapid conscription and not losing the squads, you uh, you can actually build up quite a sizable force. Katusha barrage flying all over the place, forcing the Grins to retreat. And that indirect fire, that artillery is doing quite a bit of punishment. 
We do see a tiger pushing forward straight through the center. I think it wanted to go for hunting for um, for Katushas. It looked like it was going in that direction, but it decides to stop as it encounters a uh, fuel cache down south in front of their bases. And uh, Pios are going to move there. T-34 is going to get themselves a nice flank going here on this tiger. SU-85 from the front also getting a decent amount of damage there. The uh, T-34 going to be blocking the retreat path. Nice move here by Mr. Nixa catching that as that uh, T-34. Ah, that tiger with his T-34. His T-34 has suffered engine damage, however, so it is unable to continue the pursuit. At least not effectively, but the tiger is in a very bad spot. We do see Panzer Grenadiers and Grenz moving down south to try to help out in the engagement. Conscripts are moving forward to trying to get as much damage as they can in there. But these conscripts do get themselves eliminated for Prail. Tiger does go down, however, as this, these T-34s will probably be losing their life. SU-85 is fine. This T-34 does have a damaged engine and... Wait, where's the other? <gasps> the second Tiger is dead! When did that happen? Oh my god, I missed one of the most important points in the game. I'm, I'm gonna try and see if I could get that also in a picture picture cuz yeah that is that is something I should have not missed it's kind of hard to keep track because since you're looking at different players in a you know, move set maybe I'll consider reconsider how would do this but the yeah I mean I was considering doing an overlay where I would put you know under each player you know what their ally also has the problem with that is for example right now I'm looking at Nixa right but if I try to select his, like, oh, look, uh, Prail has this, how many kills that it has, it changes it up there. So, you know, I would have to, you know, always be making those changes. And it's kind of annoying. If I could lock the view to one player and still be able to select another player and view his units like you were able to do in the past, that would be great. But, yeah, like I said, I mean, the UI is a little bit finicky and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not entirely ideal. Yes, it's an upgrade from before, but... It's still kind of wonky in some situations. A long ways to go. Hopefully they're still working on some of it. So anyways, the uh, Soviets apparently managing to turn this whole thing upside down. They, um, they have killed both of the Tigers, so they don't really have much to worry about. There is still a Stug and now a Panther on the field for Mr. Dutch Lancer, so they, you know... They don't have it uh, completely good all the time. However, well, Nixa has managed to bolster his uh, his vehicle force up to three T-34s. And even though T-34s are nice and squishy when it comes to tanks, well, I mean, three of them is still something uh, hard to deal with. AT guns have also been stolen and acquired. So, yeah, I mean, vehicles have a difficult time here against the Soviets. Panther pushing up to the north, AT Gun's just able to get a lot of damage on them. This AT Gun needs to turn itself around and uh, be able to face down the Panther. Stug pushes forward, AT Gun will probably be cleared out. Half-Track losing itself in the back as it uh, stayed there a little bit too bold. SU-85 getting some nice shot there at a distance on that Stug. Stug down to about 25% strength. And the AT Gun's getting a lot of damage there on those Panthers, but I believe they're going to get themselves, all of them, cleared out. AT gun up in the north, down to two men. There it goes, down to zero, and away they go. However, the Grants are down to two men each, so they need more uh, squads to be able to do that. Who's... Oh! Detonated! Just detonated! Look! They're right there! They're on top of it! Nixa, realize what you've done! And detonate! Detonate! Damn it. Well, let's see if we can spot it later on. Katusha's putting themselves... The uh, engagement going to be throwing a nice barrage, although not really nice. They just barraged this house and uh, knocked it to shit. We do have a stolen MG42 just covering the point, looking up to the north, but didn't actually accomplish too much. We still have a Panzer Warfare on the field. Panzer Warfare does have a nice concentrated bar barrage, and it looks like it uh, destroyed uh, one of the recruit AT guns. This AT gun up in the north is quite healthy and fine, so it'll be okay. Grant's getting a Faust going on the SU-85. SU-85 down to about 25% strength. Got shot by a pack on the side, and Prail has lost his anti-tank. Does immediately begin building another SU-85 to replace his loss. Does not want to be left out on the field without any of that. 
And the demo charge did get blown up, but not sure if it hit anything. Again, if I can remember, I'll try to get that in picture picture. Uh, Dutch Lancer still has that, and Lucifer still does not have another Tiger. Needs 230 fuel and, well, does not have that. He does have four Panzer Grenadiers on the field. So he's able to cap and fight infantry, which is great. But there are three T-34s on the field for Nixa, which is very hard to deal with for all the vehicles. This guy has something. Main gun loader injury. The main gun loader has been injured. Main gun reload times increased. Huh. I haven't seen this, uh, this crit. I'm assuming it's a type of crit that goes away once you fully repair. No. Well, how long does it take? Is that a permanent effect? That's weird. Katusha barrages <laughs> to the Grens that are pushing forward. Panzer Grenadiers also trying to push forward for the victory points. Victory points are 221 to 138. Panzer Grenadiers taking quite a beating there as they're just running straight into an onslaught. Oh, nasty shots. Panzer Grenadier down to one man. Can this squad make it out of there? Shots fly in all directions. Oh, a nice Katusha hit. And it eliminates that Panzer Grenadier squad as well as the pack in one barrage. That was a money shot there. And uh, that pack is there for the taking or destroying. We do have Stug and Panther there, however. So it's not an easy win. And down south, Panzer Grenadiers look like they eliminated the MG. No, still has it. Wait, no, that's a Maxim machine gun. Uh, yeah, it looks like the MG got eliminated. Probably inside that house. Yeah, you can see the uh, MG up there. Yep, there it is. So it got lost to the battlefield as it got destroyed inside that house. T-34 moving down south. There is nothing on the field for Lucifer to stop him. He's got three Panzer Grenadiers left. And, uh, well, it doesn't look like Nixa is inclined to go for a push. Obviously, there's still a Panther and a Stug on the field. So if they moved to react and cut off the retreat path, it wouldn't be a good situation. So it is, you know, the more conservative and wise decision to not just simply bum rush. So, for those of you that know way more of the game than I do, how do you get this uh, crit on and is there no way to remove it? Because I'm assuming it's probably one of those abilities like this, getting the target weak point. But I mean, as far as I knew, this is just a stun. I mean, how do you get that and not be able to remove it. What, does he have to go back to base and let the healers heal up the, the guy or something? I don't know. Anyways, if you know, if you guys know, let me know. So T-34 down south, doing what it can to uh, push away the approaching German infantry. We do have Panzer Guardiers pushing down south to try to recover territory. We do have the Maxim machine gun set up in the worst possible angle there as the Panzer Guardiers just get a flank going on it. One of them does decide to put itself in the line of fire, getting itself suppressed, but with the other one already on the flank, the Maxim machine gun decides, you know what? Uh -uh. T-34 says, surprise, motherfuckers, and it's going to shoot at the Panzer Guardiers. Panzer Guardiers taking a little bit of splash damage there, and the coaxial guns doing the work. Combat engineers are coming up behind there as we now finally have another Tiger on the field for Lucifer <clears throat> to be able to fight this T-34. T-34 taking a nasty hit to the front. Needs the GTFO. Gonna be trying to push away the... No? I mean, it's just sitting there. T-34 gonna be dying down south. Oh, now it notices. Wait, I'm getting shot by a Tiger. That is not the best idea. Shots continue to fly. T-34 banks around the corner. And manages to stay alive. It's a veteran to 3 T-34. You don't really want to lose that just sitting there in front of the Tiger. So Took a while to react, but at least Nixon managed to keep it alive. Up in the north, we see the Soviets have broken through and are going for the victory point. Pack on has backed off, and we have a very damaged Panther back at base with no weapon. Going to have to get repaired. And we see that the Stug apparently died. I'll also try and see if I can spot when that died. There's a lot of things that have happened. And uh, 
I haven't even written down any of them. Let me see if I can make a quick note over here while not a lot is happening. So we wanted to look at the the tiger dying. Uh -huh. We wanted to look at the demo charge. And the stug dying. I think that's it, right? Or did I say four things and I've already forgotten about one? So down south, with the support of the Tiger, we see the uh, infantry for Lucifer just managing to capture some territory. We do have still three T-34s on the field for Nixa, as he is now getting rather high up there on that uh, manpower and fuel, but he doesn't really have much that he can spend it on. Can he actually get another T-34 with this? He needs 12. He has 80. So yeah, I mean, Nixa could actually just go for another T-34 if he wanted to just to have that much more. Tiger, down south, she's getting, well, gangbanged, essentially, by all the, uh, all the T-34s and such. Manages to eliminate one of the T-34s, but, I mean, with an SU-85 putting its barrel up its ass and a T-34 nearby, the Tiger goes down as well. I'll also try and see if I can get a little bit better of a sight of that engagement since I came into it a little bit late. That is the magic of editing. We can do that kind of stuff, right? Katushas continues to throw barrages all over the place. The Katushas, let's see the kills. 12 kills on one, 9 kills on the other. That's kind of sucky. And 17 on this one, almost getting into better T2. So not too bad, but just making it a living hell here for the German forces. Mr. Dutch Lancer does have two Panthers trying to hold the north, but they are down to 60 points. Can the Germans turn around? Uh, my bet is going to be no, considering they've lost their Tiger. If they had two, a Tiger and two Panthers, that's actually pretty strong, and they could potentially push that. But now with two SU-85s on the field and uh, T-34s up to Wuza, I mean, he's got two on the field, another half track getting produced, and a third one coming up behind it, simply because he has so much resources. So much? So many, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and the Grens up north looks like they're going to die. No, yes, no. Ooh, makes it out. Conscript squad. Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers going to win this engagement. But with a T-34 there for support, could actually be turned around. No, not quickly enough. Conscript squad may actually die. Down to one man. No, a nice hit there by the T-34. Allows them to stay alive as it eliminated three of the Grens. 47 points left for the German forces. They are essentially running out of time. Pios. Panzer Grenadiers. They rush forward into the line of fire as they desperately try to get that victory point. We do have a conscript squad down south just capturing more territory. So no infantry for the Germans down south. Panthers do push forward, getting some damage there on the T-34s. SU-85s turning themselves around to face the approaching German armor. Panther taking quite a beating. T-34 pushing forward. One Panther has taken a lot of damage. Oh, lead Panther gets combo barrage there. And down it goes. Second Panther backing off a little bit. Grenz trying to hold the line against the conscripts. They will as they force a retreat. And T-34s just sprinkled around all over the place. As the Katusha barrages come down. They are unfortunately, though, not going to be hitting anything as the Grens have pushed forward. One barrage is going up to the north, so that actually could do a lot of damage. Grens are forced on the retreat. And the Panther is pushing forward, but really with no support anymore. Center map, Panzer Grenadiers trying to go for some capping. We do have a Maxim machine gun just sitting there in this house in the center, which will allow it to cover the entire territory as not a lot of infantry is around. Conscripts just moving around, capturing territory will also make it very difficult. And the victory points are down to 22. These German forces are literally running out of time, and I don't think they can do much about it. We do have a lot of infantry forces for Dutch Lancer. Lucifer doesn't really have too much. A couple of Panzer Grenadiers there, three in total, but... Yeah, there's just too much support fire there for the uh, Soviet forces, especially with those Katushas. 
None of them actually got Veteran G2, which is kind of sad. This one is so close. Can it actually eke it out before the end of the game? We shall see. 15 points remain for the German forces. Pack gun also getting eliminated there in the center. That reduces their anti-tank capabilities to one Panther, essentially. And with that, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's that's that. We do have another pack gun up there. So I suppose it's not entirely gone, but... Ten points left for the Germans. Center point, Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, managing to actually break that Maxim machine gun as it gets eliminated there, and they recover that point. But, well, seven points left. Still no ability to cap. The southern point is still capped. No way they can, they can push all the way to this point and cap it. Five point left for the Germans. Bring it down to four. GG well played. Goes down by Lucifer, as he is a gracious player. Nixa also dropping the GG. Kind of weird that the chat colors are different to the player colors, right? Like I said, it's a little bit of wonky and finicky UI, but with the tickers now down to zero, that brings an end to the engagement, and the Soviet forces win against the Ostiers in this engagement. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.